Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating a hands-on implementation of AWS Bedrock's knowledge base using the Python SDK. So by the end of this tutorial, you will know how to carry out a full-blown POC of AWS Bedrock's knowledge base offering with your own data using Python. Now, before we begin with the hands-on section, let's quickly understand what's Bedrock and knowledge base. Bedrock is nothing but a fully managed service on AWS that offers a choice of high performing foundation models or LLMs from leading AI companies like Anthropic, Cohere, DeepSeek, Meta, Mistral, and so forth. And the advantage of using Bedrock is that you can access all of these LLMs or foundation models through a single unified API. It also offers other capabilities that you would need in order to build an all out generative AI application such as agents, agentic orchestration, inbuilt session management, which is extremely important for chatbots, responsible AI, and so forth. And knowledge base is just one of those capabilities or features. And that's going to be our focus in this tutorial. So what is knowledge base? In simple terms, it's a vector store offering on AWS Cloud, where you can provide contextual information from your own data sources to the foundation models and your agents as well, in order to generate more relevant and accurate responses, which is basically the definition of RAC, right? And knowledge base does exactly that. While working with knowledge bases, you can choose between three vector store offerings. So you have the open search service, which is what we will be using in this demo. There's a PostgreSQL vector store offering on AWS Aurora. And finally, you have something called Neptune Analytics, which is a memory optimized graph database ideal for analytical use cases. Now, a typical RAG workflow would look something like this. So you have a chatbot as your front-end client-facing application, which accepts user inputs and queries the vector store in order to get a semantic match on these user inputs. On AWS, this vector store is nothing but the knowledge base, which returns the matching results. These results get passed down to the LLM, which converts them back into a natural language and displays it to the end users. So that was the flow and that was the theory bit. Now let's begin with the implementation. Before we begin with AWS Bedrock and Knowledge Base, there's one small caveat when it comes to working with Knowledge Bases especially, which is that you cannot create a Knowledge Base as a root user, which means you will have to create a new user with admin permissions uh, or admin privileges and then log into that user in order to be able to work with knowledge base. So let's go ahead and do that first. I've already created an admin user. As you can see, set and square admin. I'm just going to quickly show you how to do it. It's quite simple. Go to IAM and once you land on this page, just click on users. Now you can click on create user. Give the user a name. So I'm just going to call it Tim admin something like that. Check this box that says provide user access to the AWS management console. Select I want to create an IAM user. Create a custom password. Let me just enter the password as well. Now this depends on you if you want to recreate the password after logging in. Just make sure it is checked otherwise uncheck it. I'm going to click on next. Now come into the permissions. Click on attach policies directly and select the administrator access. Now you can click on next and then say create user. That's it. Now you can use this URL in order to sign in with the new admin account. All right, so let's get started with Bedrock. I have already logged into my AWS console using the user credentials that I just created uh, from the root user. So you can see it says sit underscore admin, which is not a root user. Now from the console, the search bar, I'm just going to say bedrock and click on AWS bedrock. All right, so all the components that put into generative AI on AWS, right? Be it your vector databases, knowledge base, LLMs, open search, which is also a vector database. Anything pertaining to generative AI on AWS comes under the AWS Bedrock ecosystem. So if you scroll down, 
on the left hand side you will see knowledge bases under builder tools let's just click on it and this is where we're going to create our first knowledge base so scroll all the way down and click on create and here we're going to select knowledge base with the vector store since we need a vector store now let's start by giving our knowledge base a meaningful name so i'm going to call this let me call this aws knowledge base demo the description is optional so i'm going to leave it at that for iron permissions leave the default selection which is create and use a new service role because aws knows what permissions to grant to the service role that it will create depending on what you select now come to the data source our data source is going to be s3 for this demo so we'll leave that selected scroll all the way down and click on next now let's give our data source a name so let me call this s3 data source which is inside this account so i'm going to leave that selected next we have to provide the path to our input data sources which we haven't uploaded yet so just type s3 in your search bar and open this in a new tab you'll need a bucket here so if you don't have a bucket create a new one i've already created one and this is where we're going to upload three pdf files I've downloaded these PDF files from uh, AWS's official documentation. So you can see the three PDF files put into uh, some Q&A related to EC2, S3 storage buckets, and Lambda functions. So I'm just going to upload all these three files to my S3 bucket. All right, so the PDFs have been uploaded. Now let's copy the name of the bucket since we have uploaded these PDF files at the root of this bucket. Let's go back and we can just say x3 colon double slash followed by the bucket name. Then you have the passing strategy. I'm going to select the default passer. You can play around with the other options as well. Then you have the chunking strategy where you have five different uh, chunking strategies i'm going to select the default one but like i said you can always try to play around and read more about the other strategies here we're not transforming the data and under advanced settings we're going to leave the default options selected now let's click on create all right now we have to select the embedding model since the data or the content inside our PDF files is going to be converted into embeddings before being ingested into the vector store, right? That's how uh, embeddings work. So for that, we will have to select a model. Now here I'm going to select Titan Text Embeddings V2 and click on Apply. Let's see what additional configurations are. All right, the dimensions I'm going to leave it to. 1024. Now we come to the vector database part where I'm going to select Amazon Open Search Serverless as the vector store and then we click on next. All right, that should be it pretty much. Now we can uh, just say create knowledge base. And this will take a little while, maybe a couple of minutes. So I'm going to give it some time and I'll return once the knowledge base has been created. Right, so our knowledge base is ready. As you can see, the status is available. Now on the right hand side, right, once you click on the knowledge base, let me go back to knowledge bases. And here you should see your knowledge base. Just click on it. And it should tell you that your knowledge base is not in sync. So just click on go to data sources, 
check the data source, which is your S3 bucket, which is where our PDFs have been uploaded, right? And select sync. So what's happening is basically your PDFs are being converted into embeddings, chunked and converted into embeddings rather, and then being synced or ingested into the open search vector store, which is what is happening right now. So it might take a couple of minutes. So let's wait this out. All right, so our data source has been synced. Now let's test our knowledge base by selecting an LLM model and trying to ask questions to this LLM, which pertains to the content inside our PDF files. All right, so you can select any LLM model of your choice. I'm just going to select the Titan Text G1. Let me see why. Now, scroll all the way down on the right hand side under test knowledge base and here I'm going to type in my question related to AWS Lambda so let me say how long can a Lambda function execute it's the random question and let's see what it says all right there you go so you can see the response that says AWS Lambda functions can execute up to 15 minutes right now let's ask another question so let me say what operating system environments are supported by the way i just took these questions directly from the pdf let me go back and let me just say in ec2 let me say run right there you go so you know these answers are not generic answers they're coming from the content inside your pdf which is stored as embeddings in open search vector store so you can try out more questions uh, you can mix and match you can try out questions from uh, all the three pdfs and see the response so that was knowledge base it was quite simple and straightforward to implement next up we'll get started with uh, invoking this knowledge base using python sdk Right before we move on to Python SDK, I want to highlight the fact that if you guys are planning to take a break while carrying out this tutorial, meaning if you've created your knowledge base now and then you might return maybe two hours later, then it's just better to just delete the knowledge base because you will incur a cost. And knowledge base is uh, roughly 50 cents per hour, but then you also have the open search serverless running in the background which is the core of your knowledge base right so overall you might incur roughly let's say a dollar and a half or two dollars per hour so it's better to just get rid of the knowledge base that you created in case you plan to take breaks because it's always easy to create a knowledge base as you've already seen it did not take too long just five to seven minutes and your knowledge base is ready so keep that in mind if you plan to take breaks all right now we get to the last bit which is quite straightforward and easy actually which is to write python code in order to invoke the knowledge base in order to get a response out of the vector store that we had created so i'm going to be executing this code inside a jupyter notebook so i'm assuming here that you have jupyter aws cli and python installed in your local system so if you don't have that go ahead and do it and also before you spin up your jupyter lab or Jupyter Notebook from your local terminal, make sure to have executed the AWS configure command. And uh, this is needed because you need to authenticate your local system with your AWS account. So you must enter the access key and the secret. Now these credentials can be of your root user. It does not necessarily have to be of your admin user because now we are invoking the knowledge base, not creating one, right? So this should be fine. So once you configure, then you can open up your Jupyter kernel and I already have my notebook here it's called invoke knowledge base uh, first of all you must make sure that you have the Boto 3 installed so if you don't have it you can just uncomment this line or this code block and run this command it says pip install Boto 3 once you have Boto 3 it's quite simple you just import it 
create a session, you create a bedrock runtime client using Bodo3, as you can see, says so Bodo3, the client. All you need to do is pass the right argument, which is uh, bedrock agent runtime. Once that is done, let me execute this code block. Then comes the actual invocation. So this is my query. This is basically the user input or the question that you want to ask. Uh, in this case, I'm saying, how long can a Lambda function execute? Max results is three, which means this is going to fetch the three closest answers or the vector match from the open search vector store. Next, you have the knowledge base ID. Now to get this, you can go back to the knowledge base. Click on the knowledge base that you had created. And you can grab the knowledge base ID from here. So just click on this little icon, come back and make sure to change it. Then you have the model ID now. This is the model ID of the LLM that you want to use. So you can get the model ID from uh, the Bedrock console again. So if you go to Amazon Bedrock, you will see model catalog. Now here you will see a list of LLMs that you can use. So just click on any LLM. And if you scroll down, you will get the model ID from here. All right, so just grab the name and paste it here. Then you have the model ARN, which follows a pattern. And then you pass the model ID to this model ARN. Next, you have the default prompt. Now, this is like a system prompt, where I'm saying you're a helpful cloud assistant who helps customers with queries related to different AWS cloud services. Right, so this is the system prompt provided to the LLM. This is just a variable or a placeholder which is mandatory. Now, if you get rid of the search result, uh, your code will fail. Right, so just make sure to not get rid of this variable here inside the prompt. And then we in invoke uh, a method called retrieve and generate, which is where we pass the user query, which is how long can a lambda function execute. And this is your basic configurations. So type is knowledge base, and then you pass the knowledge base ID, the model ARN, the max results, uh, and also the default prompt. And that's pretty much it. That's how simple it is to invoke or get results from your knowledge base. And then you can run this. Well, if I run this again, there you go. So that's your result. That was it for the implementation. Like I mentioned earlier, you can play around with different questions. Try asking different questions. Uh, also try to change the model ID. See if there's any difference if you change the LLMs. Now, this small piece of code, barely 25, 30 lines of code, you can imagine you can wrap this up inside a Lambda function. Uh, you can also containerize it and deploy it as a Docker container, maybe on ECS. Or you can also wrap this code up inside a streamlit framework if you want to uh, develop a full-blown chatbot application. All right, so that was it for this tutorial. I really hope it helped, especially if you're looking to get started with AWS Bedrock and Knowledge Base. Thanks a lot for watching.